Hello, welcome to this section of the Circuit Analysis Tutor. Uh, in this section we're going to work a problem dealing with the step response of circuits that involve capacitors and resistors. We've talked about the theory behind this in the previous section, uh, given the equations there that talk about the capacitor voltage and current um, as we apply the step the step uh, function to the circuit and see how that looks. We've also talked about how it's very similar to the inductor circuits. The equation is very similar. So here we're going to apply that. We have a circuit here. It looks complicated at first, but then you realize there's a big switch in the middle. So really there's kind of two circuits here. There's something going on over here um, because the switch is initially in this position. So in this position you can kind of ignore all of this stuff. And then at T0, the switch moves this direction, at which point all of this stuff is disconnected from the circuit. So you can kind of cover that up and forget about it, uh, and so on. So there's sort of a, a circuit A and a circuit B. So when we're in circuit A, initially, we have 40 volts, 20 kilo ohms, 60 kilo ohms. And so the current comes through here. Some of it goes this way. Some of it goes and charges up this capacitor. And then when we switch it over here, the uh, the capacitor is connected to this circuit where we have resistors 8 kilo ohms, 160 kilo ohms, 40 kilo ohms, but what we have also is 75 volt source also connected on this side and this source is actually upside down compared uh, to how it is on the other side of the circuit. So there's a lot of stuff going on here but you need to kind of think about it from a big picture point of view. First of all, when the switch is in position A over here, none of this stuff is connected. So what's going on is this 40 volt source ends up charging the capacitor to some value because the switch is in position A for a long period of time. Um, so everything's settled out, nothing is changing anymore. So this capacitor voltage, um, should, it should be charged up to a, to a known voltage that we can calculate ahead of time. Uh, and that's going to be the initial voltage in the capacitor. So when we get to the equations in a minute, you know that there's a spot in there where we, where we can put in the initial voltage in the capacitor before the switch moves. That's where that's going to come from because this network effectively is charging this guy up to some known value. Now when we switch it over, if we didn't have the source here, if this source wasn't even here, if it was just a straight wire, then the capacitor would simply discharge into those resistors and we would have what we call the natural response before when everything is just bleeding off. But we're not discharging into just resistors. We're connecting the, the capacitor into resistor network with a 75 volt source. And notice the 75 volts is bigger than the source on the other side of the circuit. And so because of that, the capacitor is, is basically going to be accepting even you know, more charge uh, or more current coming in from this side over here. So the capacitor, when it was connected only to this stuff over here, begins to charge to some value. We move the switch and then even more charge is going to come up into that capacitor. So we've got a lot of stuff going on. That's why it's a step response because we're connecting it to another source that's charging it even further. So the capacitor has an initial voltage, we got to figure out the time constant, we have to do a lot of stuff. First thing let's work on is writing down the equation. Now we have when it, gone into this in great detail uh, here. What we're trying to find in this, um, in this problem is V sub C, the voltage across the capacitor. What we want to calculate in this problem is what is the voltage across the capacitor at time t greater than zero. And the equation that we came up with for that in the last section is the voltage across the capacitor as a function of time was the following. And this is coming straight from the last section. I sub S times R plus parentheses V naught minus I sub S times R e to the minus T 